Hi, Cicerone here with another video and uh, this is going to be a review of my first impression of the release of Last Epoch. Apologies on the start of the video, my, uh, my voice is a little f***ed at the moment, I think I have a cold. So uh, I have been playing for, I think, 20 to 30 hours somewhere now since launch. And uh, it's, it's been one of the launches of all time. I'll start with addressing the server issues. People were asking me before the launch started how I thought it was going to go. And uh, I thought the first day was going to be a disaster. Uh, obviously, I hoped that it wouldn't. I was hoping they would have a smooth launch because they're a company that I've watched grow from very small since 2018 until what it is today, which is a very beautiful game. And I hope that they got a good shot. So I was expecting one day to be a disaster and that it would be mostly fixed on day two. Day three, and it's starting to become playable, but it definitely went worse than I expected. Um, I've been pretty consistent on being pretty mild on server issues on both Wilson, Diablo, and, and most games in general, uh, which is shit, because when you do buy a product, you deserve to be able to use it. Um, the reason I'm a little bit milder on that and harsher on like game bugs like Wilson had, no game seemed to get their first initial launch right. So it must be a difficult thing. I don't know much about it. But yeah, that aside, it is uh, unacceptable that it is as bad as it is. I mean, that's all I can say about that, really. It sucks. But that aside, I want the rest of the review just to be about the game itself. I mean, if I go to, um, to Steam and we look at the uh, store page, recent reviews is mixed. 62%. I actually saw a very fair comment about it on Reddit. They deserve mostly positive reviews because their game is amazing and they receive and they deserve mostly negative reviews because their servers are unplayable right now. Like the game, well, not the servers, they're fine, but the like the login and, and moving between servers doesn't work right now. So a lot of online things is a disaster. So mixed seems fair. And you know what? It's it's hard to disagree with that. It it does uh, hurt my heart a little bit to uh, see this uh, launch get marred by the server issues, but it's hard to say it's not deserved with how uh, how rough it's been. But uh, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience so far. So uh, I finished the campaign. The, uh, the campaign was pretty rough to get through because of the loading screens, but somebody in chat early on told me that when I was like level 35 or something, they were like, Zizarin, if you go to the monolith system super early on, that's Lost Epoch's endgame system, there's no server issues because you stay on the same server. I managed to get at level 35 into the monoliths and I stayed there until, well, uh, 72, I think. And then the servers were good enough that I was able to finish the campaign. And the campaign has changed so much, like has become so beautiful. Honestly, the timelines are still a little bit confusing to me. Where the hell do we start? Imperial era, maybe? I don't even know. I have no idea. The first two areas, etc. So beautiful. They've done such a good job with the uh, the graphic overhaul of the game. And I always really enjoyed comparing Wilson and Last Epoch early because Wilson was so pretty. It was so beautiful early on. But they seem to have focused everything on the beauty of the game. Whereas Last Epoch had focused everything on gameplay and made the game really fun early on and had really cool core systems. And then eventually made the game beautiful and now it is what we see today and now it's arguably better looking than path of exile and on par with diablo 4 um like it is really really nice now so that's quite good i think they made a good choice there and yeah i've had a blast playing so far i uh, started off playing a primalist which i was called druid i feel like the base class should be called druid but uh i'm sorry i even called my character druid and uh, I'm playing a wolf summon build, which is super strong. People are pointing out that my unique got nerfed, but it also got buffed in a few other ways. Like there's new stats on weapons now. And uh, yeah, I've just been having a blast on that. The game has a really good impact. That's very important to me. Uh, in the last few days, a lot of people have been asking me about like ARPD tier lists and stuff. And how I've been looking at other games like Diablo 4, Path of Exile, Grim Dawn. And a lot of people are surprised that I put Grim Dawn very low rated on my list. And I actually do think it's a wonderful game. It is a very good game. However, um, the reason it's on the bottom of my list is impact in Last Epoch is quite good. There's a lot of skills like 
fury leap especially but like a lot of skills that you like you feel powerful while using them they sound good there's that crunchy nice feeling like you know herald of ice in path of exile or occultist explosion in path of exile it's got that nice impact the oomph factor and grim dawn doesn't have that for me so last epoch scores some points there honestly the the game is more challenging now they have made it a lot harder i did have quite a lot of close calls and i ended up dying uh in the ending the storm I had my end in the end. Uh, I logged off at log on. And uh, yeah, like the servers were a bit iffy. I should have just portaled out. Because um, apparently that's instant. But I was so worried about the the portal loading that uh, I tried logging out instead and ended up dying. So rookie mistake, but we learn and we improve and we get better. I especially, I love the item system. Like I don't want Path of Exile to be the same and I don't want every RPG to be the same. I love seeing like differences in ARPGs. But I, I truly feel like the, the item system in this game is something special. Uh, if you don't know how it works, uh, you can see here that I have like forging potential. So once I had more hybrid health, I could now forcibly upgrade that and just force this item to have more health on it uh, until my forging potential runs out and you lose X amount per craft with a chance of losing zero. The game doesn't have any Valorb right now. That's its weak point, in my opinion. I think Valorbs, like being able to corrupt an item for a chance of destroying it, but a big upgrade is one of the coolest things ever. Um, so I wish the game had that. But other than that, it, it's, it really does a great way of balancing, crafting, and finding items, both being exciting. There's like a very good hybrid of both. You're never going to find a perfect item, but you're never going to start from scratch either. You'll find an item that's like halfway off the puzzle, and then continue from there. And the legendary potential system is so cool as well. If you don't know how that works, it is basically uh, a unique item can drop with legendary potential of zero to four. And if it has four, you can smash an entire exalted item such as this into the unique item. So if I, I had unique gloves with four legendary potential and I use these with it, I would have all these stats in addition to the unique item. With one, it would choose one stat at random. So I might get the minion damage or the endurance threshold, for example. So it's such a cool item system. It has a really good chase. And uh, it's a wonderful game. They've done a lot of changes. They've added a lot more stats. Um, skills have been changed and buffed and nerfed. And obviously the, the Falconer and the Warlock are very strong right now. That's why I've not been playing them as my starter. I do want to play them pretty soon, but I figured I would avoid the, the most flavor of the month early on and uh, and try some different things and i i love primalist my minions are so cool and like simple quality of life things like the a key that you have full control over your minions just by hitting a is uh so cool and i absolutely love it telling them what to attack or where to move i think it's a, a decent enough amount of skills you're not just relying on one in every build some builds uses two or three and uh you know a lot of things end up being utility and movement uh, the mana system is pretty interesting with the way that it like goes negative in mana. I don't know if I actually can go negative mana on this build. If you have one mana and you cast something that costs 50, you have a uh, minus 49. Uh, the most lacking point of Last Epoch right now probably is the endgame system. If you don't know how it is, I have done another review as well before launch. And you have the monolith system where it's very similar to maps and synthesis from Path of Exile. Uh, where you go into sub areas and they're different and you can target farm rewards. So if I click here... I get smaller islands, so like these will drop rings, this will drop arena key. Like you'll, you'll be able to target farm and try to chase what you want. And different timelines favor different things. Like the Black Sun timeline favors helmets, for example. And there's different blessings you can grind out and they get better in the end game. Because once you finish these three islands here, all of the timelines unlock at level 100. So then you can like, oh, I really need the unique drops from this timeline or I need more helmets from this timeline, etc. Um, so they have a very good target farmable endgame, and I really like that. I think they've done a great job with it. Um, and they do have a few bosses. Like, obviously, there's a boss in every single timeline, and they're, like, okay bosses. They're, like, fairly challenging at level 100, especially with higher corruption, which is, like, an infinite scaling thing. Um, I don't think I have any corruption here right now because I died. But um, corruption is, like, a thing that scales the damage and life of monsters. And then you have like uh, really hard things like a tier 4 Jolra that is the closest thing to Ubers right now in the game. Obviously, it's nothing compared to Path of Exile Uber, so the game does need more endgame content. I'd say right now you probably easily get around 200 hours worth of content for your $35. 
So it is very worth it. Would love to see people in the comments saying what they love or what they don't like about the game and what they think they should improve. I would say it is the second best ARPG on the market right now, number one being Path of Exile. I hope you guys enjoy the review. Thank you so much for watching. And if you buy the game through me, I appreciate it. And uh, more importantly, try to die less than my voice does.